All right, let's do one more video involving circular motion and also has friction. So let's look at a car going around a flat curved roadway. So for the car to go around the curve, there must be friction between the tires in the roadway to push the car around the curve. Because of the car's inertia, it wants to go in a straight line. So if we want to go around a curve, there must be friction to push us around the curve. There has to be a force toward the center of the curve, and that's the friction between the tires and the roadway. So if we are given the coefficient of static friction between the tires and the roadway is mu sub s, what is the maximum speed the car can have and still make the curve? So let's make a quick drawing in a free body diagram and look at the forces involved. So here I have a crude sketch of a car on a roadway and I've drawn the acceleration vector in yellow. And again, that points toward the center of the curve. So the acceleration is toward the center of the curve. And then to the right, I have the free body diagram. So we have the weight of the car down, mg. They have the normal force from the roadway holding the car up, f sub n. And then we have the static friction between the tires and the roadway pointing toward the center of the curve, and that's f sub s. So we apply Newton's second law. The sum of the forces equals ma. We have an acceleration in the horizontal direction, in the x direction. That's the mv squared over r. And we have no movement in the vertical direction. So we see that the normal force upward has to equal the weight downward. So we have f sub s equals mv squared over r. And the normal force f sub n equals the weight mg. So now, since we want to find the maximum speed the car can have without skidding, we will be at the maximum static friction. So I can replace F sub s with mu sub s times the normal force, and that will equal the mass times our centripetal acceleration, mv squared over r. So then the normal force I can replace with the weight mg. So I have mu sub s mg equals mv squared over r. The m divides out. Multiply both sides by r, and we get mu sub s rg equals v squared, or v equals the square root of mu sub s rg. So this is the maximum speed that we can go without skidding. If we go any faster than this, then we will skid. The car will go in a straight line, and the road will turn away from us, and we end up in the ditch. So also notice that the faster we go, the larger the radius of the curve must be for us to make the curve without skidding. All right, next we'll look at what happens if we have a banked roadway. So now let's look at a car rounding a banked curved roadway. There is a speed that a car can safely make the curve without any friction. And we call this the design speed. So thus, even if the road was icy, we could still make the turn without skidding. So in that case, we only have the normal force from the road on the car and the weight of the car. There's, we're doing this without any friction between the tires and the roadway. So looking at the diagram, I have drawn in the acceleration vector in yellow. And again, this points toward the center of the curve. And I've also put in a coordinate system. Now notice th that this is a different situation from a box on an inclined plane that we looked at in earlier videos. And in that case, we chose a coordinate system with the x-axis parallel to the plane and the y-axis perpendicular to the plane. So here I've chosen a coordinate axis with the y-axis vertical and the x-axis horizontal. And I did that because our acceleration is horizontal toward the center of the curve. And so now our acceleration is only in the x direction. But that means the normal force is, is at an angle. So when we break the force vectors into components, we'll have two different components for the normal force. All right, so now in the diagram, at the bottom is the free body diagram for the car on the roadway. So we have an acceleration in the x direction. So I've broken the normal force vector into a vertical and horizontal components. 
So in the y direction, we have the normal force times cosine of theta. And in the horizontal direction, we have the normal force times sine of theta. And the angle theta there is between the y-axis and the normal force. And that is the same as the angle of the bank of the roadway. So now we can apply Newton's second law and then solve those equations to find the design speed. So in the y direction, the sum of the forces in y equals 0, and the sum of the forces in x equals the mass times the centripetal acceleration. So in the y direction, we have the, the normal force upward times cosine of theta must be equal to weight down, mg. And then in the horizontal direction, all we have is the normal force times sine of theta, and that equals the mass times the centripetal acceleration, or mv squared over r. So from the first equation, I can solve for the normal force. And so we get the normal force equals mg over cosine theta. Substitute that in for the normal force in the second equation. So we have mg over cosine theta times sine of theta equals mv squared over r. Well, sine over cosine, of course, is tangent. And we have a mass on both sides, so that will divide out. And we get g tangent theta equals v squared over r, solving for v we get then that the design speed is equal to the square root of rg tangent theta. So this will be our design speed. And that is the speed that we can go around the curve without any friction whatsoever. OK, now what happens if we go faster than that? We will need some friction. So now let's add in a frictional force. All right, so now we want to go around the curve faster than the design speed. In this case, we will need some friction to help give us the necessary centripetal force. So in the diagram here, I've added in the static friction force vector. The static friction, of course, between the tires and the roadway. And it's going to point parallel to the roadway, pointing down the hill. So it gives us a component toward the center of the circle. To help give us our centripetal acceleration. So now I've broken all the force vectors into their components in our coordinate system and we can apply Newton's second law the sum of the forces equals ma. So in the horizontal direction we have the normal force times sine of theta pointing inward plus the static friction times cosine theta pointing inward that equals the mass times our centripetal acceleration, or mv squared over r. In the vertical direction, we're not moving vertically, so the sum of the forces vertically equals 0. So we have upward normal force times cosine of theta minus static friction times sine theta down and minus the weight mg down equals 0. All right, so I've taken the second equation and put the mg on the right side. So this gives us the last two equations. Normal force times sine theta plus static friction times cosine theta equals mv squared over r. And the second equation is normal force times cosine theta minus static friction times sine theta equals mg. Now I did that so that we have the normal force components and the static friction components on the left side and everything else on the right side. So it will make it easier to solve when we actually do problems with numbers. Now, if we were at the maximum speed that we could have without skidding, in that case, the static friction would be at its maximum value. And then we could just substitute mu sub s times the normal force in for the static friction force into our equations. However, in normal conditions, the static friction will not be at its maximum value. So for solving problems, we have to be careful of that. So depending on what the problem asks for, the static friction is not necessarily going to be at its maximum value. But if it is, then we can just substitute mu sub s f sub n for the static friction force. In that case, we would be on the verge of skidding. So we could use these two equations then to find the maximum speed that we could go around the curve without skidding. All right, let's do a numerical example. Here we have a car with a mass of 800 kilograms traveling around a curve banked at 10 degrees at a speed of 43 kilometers per hour, which is 12 meters per second, without skidding. The radius of the curve is 25 meters. Part A, what is the normal force exerted by the road on the tires? Part B, 
what is the frictional force exerted by the road on the tires? And part C, what is the minimum coefficient of friction between the road and the tires so that we don't skid? All right, so this is an application of, of one of the previous slides. So in the diagram here, we show all the forces broken into their components, and we applied Newton's second law, the sum of the forces equals ma, and it gives us these two equations. All right, so these are the equations we're going to use to solve the problem. So for part A, we want to find the normal force, F sub n. So notice that here are the two equations I have over on the left side that I get from sum of the forces equals ma. We have normal force sine of theta plus static friction cosine of theta equals mv squared over r. And we have the normal force times cosine theta minus static friction times sine theta equals mg. Well, if I multiply the first equation by sine of theta and the second equation by cosine theta, then I end up with the top two equations on the right side. I have normal force times sine squared theta plus static friction sine theta cosine theta equals mv squared over r sine theta. And the second equation becomes normal force times cosine squared theta minus static friction sine theta cosine theta equals mg cosine theta. Now look what happens. I can add these two equations together and the terms with the static friction cancel out. Plus, I have normal force sine squared plus normal force cosine squared. Sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. So when I sum these two equations, I get normal force then equals mg cosine theta plus mv squared over r times sine theta. Well, now I've got numbers for everything on the right side. So we can just plug in numbers for those values and get the value of the normal force. So the mass was given as 800 kilograms. G, of course, 9.8 meters per second squared times cosine of 10 degrees plus the mass, 800 kilograms times the speed, 12 meters per second squared. Make sure you use SI units. So we had to convert the kilometers per hour to meters per second. And then divided by the radius, 25 meters, in times the sine of 10 degrees. So I crunch those numbers in my calculator, and we get the normal force is 8,521 newtons. Rounded to two significant digits, we get 8.5 kilonewtons for the normal force. So here's the answer for part A. All right, so now for part B, we want to find the frictional force, F sub S. So I take the second of my equations, normal force cosine theta minus static friction sine theta equals mg. And I solve that one for the static friction. So I get F sub S sine theta equals F sub N cosine theta minus mg, divide by sine theta and plug in the numbers. So we get F sub S then equals F sub N, which is 8,521 newtons times cosine 10 degrees minus the mg, so that's 800 kilograms times 9.8, and divide by sine of 10 degrees. So then when I crunch those numbers, I get the static friction equals to 3,176 newtons, which rounded to two significant figures gives us 3.2 kilonewtons. So here's the answer to part B. All right, now we want to find part C. What is the minimum coefficient of friction between the road and the tires? Okay, so the minimum coefficient of friction will be when we're just on the verge of skidding and the static friction will be at its maximum value. So I just set the static friction equal to its maximum value, mu sub s times the normal force, solve for mu sub s, and we get the static friction force divided by the normal force. Well, we already have numbers for these two. The static friction was 3,176 newtons divided by the normal force of 800 8,521 newtons, and that gives us 0 0.37 rounded to two significant digits. So we've got the answer to part C. All right, so what if we're going slower than the design speed? Well, think about this. If we're on the banked roadway and there were no friction at all, the car would want to slide down the hill. So if we're going slower than the design speed, then we need friction to help keep us from sliding down the hill. 
In this case, the friction will point up the hill parallel to the roadway. So that is the only difference here. This is the friction is now in the opposite direction when we're going slower than the design speed. So all we have to do is change the sign of the terms with the static friction from plus to minus and from minus to plus. And so we get the same equations, but we just change the sign of the static friction components. So in the horizontal direction, we have the normal force times sine theta pointing to the right, and then we have f sub s cosine theta pointing to the left. So we have f sub n sine theta minus f sub s cosine theta equals the mass times the centripetal acceleration, mv squared over r. And in the vertical direction, we have normal force times cosine theta upward, and now we have a static friction component upward, f sub s sine theta, and that will equal the weight down. So these are the equations we would use if we were going slower than the design speed. All right, so that's the end of the videos about Newton's second law. So next, we'll go on and we'll look at work in energy. Hi, Dr. C here. I want to ask you to please help support this channel. There are a number of links in the video description to Amazon.com. If you purchase any items from Amazon by entering through these links, even if it's not one of the items listed, I will receive a small commission that helps to produce more content. There is no additional cost to you whatsoever. Also, please leave your comments, questions, or suggestions below. I want to thank you for support of this channel and please subscribe. I hope you find my videos useful.